Hello everybody, I'm a maths and physics tutor and today I wanna show you how to calculate the resistance of a wire cube. Imagine that you have a cube and each edge of this cube is a resistor with the same resistance R. The question is, what is the cube resistance between different pairs of vertices? Let's start with the vertices on the space diagonal. Thanks to the symmetry of the cube, we know that the current through the edges starting from the vertex A are the same. We also know that each edges of the cube has the same resistance. That means that the voltage across each edge is also the same. And the potential at the end of these edges is the same too. So as you can see, the potential of point C is equal to that of the point E and is also equal to that of the point D. And due to the symmetry, the potentials of the symmetrical point F, G and K are equal to the same potential of two points means a zero voltage between those points. For that reason, we can merge the points with the same potential. That will change nothing, because there would no any current through the conductor connecting points with the same potential. And now we can easily draw the equivalent circuit. These three edges, starting at the point A and ending at the point T, are actually in a parallel connection. The resistance of this construction is R over 3. As you can see, we merged points C, E and D into one junction T. We also have the same construction of three resistance in parallel at the opposite corner of the cube. We merged points F, G and K into one junction M. Another six edges starting at the point T and ending at the point M are also in parallel. The resistance of this construction is R over 6. As you can see, all of those segments are in a series connection. So the total resistance equals to 5R over 6. Ok, and now let's calculate the cube resistance between two vertexes on a phase diagonal. In this case, we have two pairs of points with the same potential. Really, look at this picture. Currents through the edges AC and AD are the same, so the edges AC and AD are equivalent. That's also true for the directions AE and AD. So as one can see, the points C and D and also the points E and F are with the same potentials. And once again, we can merge points with the same potential. And now we can easily draw the equivalent circuit. These two edges starting at the point A and at a common point. We call it point M. These two edges start at the point M and then go to the point B. This construction consists of one resistor that is in series with the construction of two resistors in parallel ending at the point T. Due to the symmetry, we have the same construction on the opposite side of the cube. Well, and finally, these two edges starting at the point M and ending at the point T is in parallel. So now we should calculate the total resistance of the obtained equivalent circuit. I remind you that each resistor has the resistance of R. So the resistance of all the segments with two resistors in parallel is R over 2. These two resistors in a series connection. So the total resistance of this segment as well as the resistance of this symmetrical segment is 3R over 2. And now look at the circuit. This situation is called the balanced bridge. If the ratio of two resistors in the left leg is equal to ratio of two resistors in the right leg, that points T and M have the same potential and the current through the central resistor is zero. For that reason, we can delete this resistor from the circuit. And now we can see that these resistors in a series connection. So the resistance of the upper part of the circuit is 3R and the resistance of the bottom part of the circuit is R. So finally, we should calculate the resistance of this construction consists of two resistors in parallel. Calculation gives the result of 
3R over 4. And finally, let's find the cube resistance between two vertexes on the common edge. Again, due to the cube symmetry, the current through the edges AC and AD is the same, and the point C and D have the same potential in this case. But this is also true for the symmetrical points E and F, so we can merge each of those pairs of points into one junction, and we can easily draw the equivalent circuit. This edge, starting at the point A, ends directly at the point B. These two pairs of edges can be replaced by these constructions of two resistors in parallel. As one can see, we merged points C and D into one junction T and points E and F into one junction M. These two edges are in parallel. These two pairs of edges can be replaced with these segments. And the last edge can be replaced with the resistor connects left and right part of the circuit. And again, resistors of all the constructions of two resistors in parallel is R over 2. These three resistors in series gives the effective resistance of 2R. The resistance of these two resistors in parallel is 2R over 5. The resistance of the upper part of the circuit is 7R over 5. And finally, we obtain the total resistance of 7R over 12. And that is the answer. Well, you can ask me, what if it's just a mathematical trick? Can you approve your calculations in a direct experiment? And my answer will be, yes, I can. Look at this. Especially for this experiment, I made this cube. Each edge of this cube is a resistor with the same resistance. I also have a digital multimeter that can measure the resistance. Let's measure the resistance of the resistor itself. As you can see, it's 38.3 kilo ohms. Now let's measure the cube resistance between the vertexes on the space diagonal. As you can see, it's 32.3 kilo ohms. And between two points on the common edge. It's 22.6 kilo ohms. Between two vertexes on the face diagonal. It's 28.9 kilo ohms. Well, what is the conclusion? The measured value of the cube resistance between two points on the space diagonal is 32.3 kilo ohms. While the calculated one is 31.9 kilo ohms. So, as you can see, the results of measurements are in good agreement with our calculations. There is also true for other cases. The summary is presented on this slide. I believe that the slight difference between measured and calculated values can be explained by small variation of electrical properties of the employed resistors. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.